401ks are very powerful vehicles. Not only will it be our largest asset over time, but there's a lot of opportunity inside of them as well. Find out how to make that opportunity yours on Consider This Program. Welcome back to Consider This Program. We are so glad to have you here. I'm your host, Grant Sullivan. And I'm Aaron Rayum. Man, Aaron, I love doing these with you, my friend. It's so glad to have you here. Um, you know, we were just engaging in 401ks in the, in the first segment. So if you're listening to the show, um, we, we record these and they go out on the radio and they're broken out into four segments. Um, and if you're watching us live, you know, on our, either our podcast or YouTube, you know, rewind, etc., to go back and, and get content or, or to kind of refocus some of the things that we say. But, you know, in this segment, Aaron, I, we want to continue the discussion on the 401k. It's such a big machine. Sure. That we want to dedicate two whole segments to it. Um, and so we just talked about in the last segment, you know, what it is, why contributions are there, what your limits are, hardship, et cetera. Now let's talk about some other opportunities or how can we make most of the 401k plan based on the rules that are baked inside of it per the ERISA code and the IRS. Um, you know, we're big on tax planning. Absolutely. Huge. Yep. And Aaron, I've sat in many a training with you where you're leading tax planning conversations. Uh, conversions, etc. And for th- some of the families that listen to the show who are out of state and maybe um, are looking for a little bit of help, we've had some questions come in. And the big question surrounding 401ks um, and conversions is, hey, should we do an in-plan Roth conversion in our 401k? Now, generally speaking, we try to lead individuals to do that conversion inside of an IRA. Yep. And the primary reason, Aaron, is taxes. Well, the question that we get is, wait, well, taxes are taxes are taxes, right? It shouldn't matter. Well, actually it does. Because in an in-plan conversion, your custodian, whoever that may be, Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard, American Funds, Empower, you name them, they're required by law to withhold 20% federal taxes on that conversion, whether you want it withheld or not. And when you do a Roth conversion, you always want to make sure that you have the ability, potentially, to pay the tax with cash at the end of the year after the conversion so the full dollar amount gets invested into the Roth. Inside of a 401k, that's very limiting. So if you have an in-service non-hardship distribution clause or you've transitioned employers and you want to do conversions, we would suggest rolling that to the IRA instead and doing conversions there. So, Aaron, once the conversion, I'm sorry, once the money comes out of the 401k plan uh-huh. and we have the opportunity to convert inside of the IRAs, what are some key considerations people should be thinking about and paying attention to? When it's in the IRA? Correct. Uh, specifically, we want to look at tax and what bracket that those conversions are going to be taxed at. Um, as you mentioned at the start of the show, what we do heavily is tax planning. And so we want to make sure where those dollars are going to fall in your marginal bracket. Um, your marginal bracket is the stair steps. So there's a 10%, 12%, 22, all the way up to 37%. Um, and we typically recommend conversion somewhere between the 12 and 22% bracket. Uh, makes the most sense. Sometimes if you can't get out of those higher brackets, we will definitely still recommend uh, just because we know taxes are on sale, as you mentioned. Right. And so as of today, uh, we know that by the end of 2025, that the tax code that we currently have will sunset, and that 12% bracket goes to 15, the 15 or the 22% bracket goes to 25, 24 is the next one, goes to 28. And the way that you pay attention to that, again, is making sure you're maximizing the bracket that you're in. 100%. And... You know, our, our attention to detail when it comes to tax planning sometimes can get people in trouble if they're not working with a, a specialist or someone from our team in particular. And so I want you to rewind that if you're watching us on YouTube or podcast and re-listen to what Aaron said. You have to pay attention to the marginal tax bracket you're stuck in or we call married to mm-hmm. because you don't want to push yourself into a higher bracket. And if you're on Medicare, you've got to be careful because of your Medicare premium ceiling is, a, is is actually lower than some of the tax brackets. So just because you want to fill up a certain tax bracket, be careful because your Medicare premium lever is actually lower than the tax bracket threshold. Very good point, Grant. Mm-hmm. There is just... I scratched the surface yes. on what you <laughs> need to consider when you're doing a Roth conversion. Um, there is a whole lot more detail that goes into mm-hmm. it. I would recommend that if you're thinking about doing conversions that you would seek uh, professional help 
Oh, absolutely. From your tax professional and from your fiduciary advisor. Um, and if you don't have either of those, please reach out to us and we'll talk about next steps meetings here in a second. Um, the one element that often advisors don't talk about, Aaron, and I think we need to give 401k plans their due, mm -hmm. is that the money doesn't have to leave the plan. It doesn't. Right. So you you really can keep the money in the plan. Um, some people, they, they get emotionally tied to the asset size and moving it from that bucket, they believe, oh my gosh, if I touch it or I move it, I'm going to shake the juju in here <laughs> and it's going <laughs> to yeah. go away or it's going to go down. And if that's the case, folks, just remember, markets go up and down. It doesn't matter what you're invested in. Um, you want to do the right thing for you. And if it's leaving the money in the plan and that makes sense, work with an advisor that's labeled as a fiduciary because they have to do it in your best interest by law um, and by code. And so we've had, we've had families leave their money in 401k plans because it made the right sense. Um, you can also, <clears throat> excuse me, move it out as we've talked about. And the other element is if you're going to leave it in the plan, the, the, one of the primary reasons I recommended it is actually for beneficiaries. And here's why. So in the code, we talk about conversions, right, Aaron? Yes. And so you and I own an IRA. Our wives own an IRA. And so we can convert our IRAs. And if I were to pass away, my wife inherits my IRA. But because of the spousal rules in the tax code, she can make the IRA hers and make one big IRA and still do conversions. Now, for our children, though, if they inherit the IRA because my wife passes, can they convert the IRA to a Roth? when both of us are gone. No. And that's what's interesting, folks. I want you to hear that simple, yet sweet, yet very dominant answer Aaron gave. No. And so for families that are inheriting assets, this particular IRA assets, just remember, non-spouses cannot convert the IRA to a Roth IRA. <clears throat> now, just like all tax code, there's a loophole, albeit a tiny one, and that's in the 401k plan space. So if you were if your situation did not allow for significant tax conversion and you wanted to leave your heirs the ability to convert that money to Roth, they're not going to be able to do it in IRA, but they can do it in a 401k plan. Yes, it's amazing. And you go, wait a second, what a great, Aaron, you just told me, no, my heirs are bleeding, what's happening? Well, in the 401k plan code, depending on the plan document, again, there it is again, your heirs can convert a 401k deferred tax money to Roth 401k money in the plan. Now, yes, they're going to pay the 20% federal withholding. Yep, understand that. And they're still subject to the 10-year the 10 distribution rule because of the SECURE Act. Still going to do that. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The money gets to grow tax-free for a period of years, either 1, 10, 5, 7. And if they convert that in the 401k plan, they have the ability to build some tax-free wealth, at least for a period of time. And strategically, it makes sense. So, folks, if you notice in the 401k plan, Aaron and I, Aaron and I have not talked about investments, investments on an iota, with the exception that they're limited. And because the investments, although good, right, and it's good to understand what those are, and it's good to rebalance them over time and pay attention to what you're doing in your 401k plan, along with all of your other assets, the tax considerations are monumental. And the potential there for you and for us in the 401k plan is huge just in those moves alone. And so for another, a couple other things, Aaron, if our families are married to a certain tax bracket, right? Mm -hmm. Conversions don't make sense for whatever reason. They still can do one tax change, and that's to con move their contributions from deferred to Roth. Sure. And so going back to our, to our tax stair steps, why would they do that? Why would that be important? So you're saying, Grant, I came to conversions, but why are you going to have me do contribution changes instead? Uh, mainly control for when you move into your life after work. Boom, baby. And so you don't want to go into what we call your life after work. Most people call that retirement and be lopsided in one tax bucket. Mm -hmm. The IRS can change the game on the tax code, and it's likely that rates are going to go up. And so if all of your dollars are tax deferred, your playing field is dollars tax deferred, dollars coming out, are paying tax. Mm -hmm. The Roth, the benefit of that is you don't have required minimum distributions at age 72. Mm -hmm. It grows tax-free. Your distributions are tax-free. And so it really, really matters when you're moving into distribution in your life after work. Absolutely. And I need to correct myself, actually, because I said, what would we do? Well, we weren't doing conversions. Why would we change the contributions? What I meant to say is that 
when you're doing conversions, you also have the ability to change your contributions to Roth. And we have that going going on for families all the time. Now, here's an element that Aaron, you and I have touched on. Um, depending on who you work with, if it's an annuity salesman or insurance salesman or other advisor, there's some very, uh, what I was, what I like to say, uh, intense opinions on the word I'm about to throw out. Mm-hmm. But you know, the annuities have made their way into the 401k plan space. Wonderful. Um, good, bad, or indifferent, it's the case. Now, let's take a, kind of take a couple minutes, Aaron, talking about what annuities are and where we see potentially where they fit and where to be careful in the plan. Uh, an annuity is really just a contract through an insurance company, and they're traditionally designed to pay you income in the future. Um, a lot of times they're heavy laden with fees and expenses that people don't know or don't pay attention to. And more often than not, annuities are sold more than bought. They are, so, 100%. Uh, where it fits inside of the 401k plan, I'm going to lean on your expertise sure. for that um, because I'm not a big fan of them altogether. Yeah, no, you're all right. And and again, you've you got to be careful to, and I want to echo what Aaron said, they're more often sold than bought. And especially when they enter the 401k plan, you have to be very wary. Now, where our team sees annuities fitting potentially is when you do, when you buy an annuity for immediate income. Yeah. So if there's a need there, and it fits tax wise. We're not afraid of the inflation concerns, which, by the way, those are concerns now. It's got to be a perfect storm for that to work because once you purchase that annuity and you annuitize those dollars, you can't go backwards. The insurance company owns the asset, not you. You're they're paying you the monthly income stream. So things to consider. A lot of opportunity there. Um, Aaron, thank you for being with me today. If, you've, if you're looking for more in-depth conversation and you want to engage with one of our advisory team members, please reach out to us at 800-928-4001. Get set up for a Next Steps meeting with Brittany. Um, or you can reach out to us and get checklists or ask questions through our website, yourlifeafterwork.com.